So I just got this book and I wanted to start sharing some of these recipes with everyone. Hey everyone, it's me, Katie Beth again. And this year, something I really wanted to work on was my health. And I don't necessarily mean weight. Smaller is not always lighter, but my health in general. I want my insides to actually be healthy. And one of the big things that always trips me up is that I really like bread. I'm basically like Oprah, like, give me that bread. I love bread. Unfortunately, part of a more rounded diet, a healthier diet, is more than just eating cheese toast every night. It's called melting on the bread. So in an effort to work on some of this health, I've decided to go more low carb. I don't quite know if I trust myself or even want to go completely keto yet. But I do recognize there's a lot of benefits in cutting at least a lot of carbs. And one of the helpful tools in that is the keto diet and things meant for the keto diet. Just because they cut out all of those carbs or a lot of them. And since I love bread so much, I got this keto bread cookbook on Amazon. I believe it was like $23. It was between $20 and $30, I think on the lower end of that. I'm not sponsored by Amazon or any of those, but I'll still try to put the link for the cookbook in the description below if you're interested in that. I'll also be putting the substitutions for the recipe versus the original things in the recipe in the description below if you just wanted to check that out. If you wanted to just skip through the video and read what things you need from your kitchen. So one of my all-time favorite foods is garlic bread. I love it. I just love it so much. And luckily for me, I thought, I found this garlic bread biscuits recipe in the keto cookbook. I also happen to love me a good biscuit. So that's going to be our first adventure in keto bread cooking. Let's get to it. So I did make some adjustments from the original ingredients just because some spices I don't like so I didn't want to use and I didn't have heavy whipping cream and I wanted to make this now so I used almond milk instead. So the basic ingredients we've got here, we've got milk, almond flour, butter, an egg, baking powder, salt, garlic powder, and two types of cheese. So while the oven was warming to 350 degrees, in a mixing bowl, I poured in a cup of almond flour, one teaspoon of baking powder. However, I don't quite have the right measurement, so I have to use the half a teaspoon twice. Just leveling it off to get the right amount. And there I am with one teaspoon of baking powder. Next, the directions say to put one teaspoon of garlic powder in. And I'm trying to use the container the same way the baking powder container works. Kind of works, just a little harder to get the spoon in there. So that was one teaspoon of garlic powder. Next is one quarter teaspoon of salt. And I do happen to have the right measurement spoon for that. So ideally, you'd probably be using a mixer to do this. But it says to stir it all in, and um, I don't feel like pulling out a mixer, plugging it in, putting it together, and whatnot. So I'm just mixing this up in fast motion with my fork, trying to get all those little baking powder balls broken up. It might be old baking powder, so that might be why they're a little stiffer and hard to break up. But I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna keep stirring all this until I feel like it's mixed up pretty well. And I stopped because I kept seeing little black flakes and I wanted to make sure it wasn't a weevil situation. Luckily, it's just an almond skin situation. So next is the butter. So the directions say two tablespoons chilled unsalted butter diced. It also says to cut in the butter until it looks crumbly. Uh, so I'm just using my butter and putting it in there and I'm just going to use my fork to smash it up when I'm ready. I'm also using the side of this, also like the baking powder jar to try and get pretty accurate measurements. Okay, 
feel like I've gotten all the butter out. So now I'm just gonna use my fork to do my version of cutting the butter in as the directions awkwardly and weirdly say. And it says to just do this until it all looks pretty crumbly. So I'm just gonna keep mixing it in until it looks like crumbles, I guess, and that it's all mixed in. So now I'm gonna put the milk in. The original directions did say to use heavy whipping cream. I just don't wanna go to the store, so I'm using our almond milk. And yes, it's labeled with a J on top because we're the kind of household that uh, I guess has to label all our stuff. But uh, roommates, you know the deal. So opening up this fresh almond milk, there's gonna be some really almondy biscuits with like almond flour, almond milk. This one I'm putting a little less milk in just cause the last one overfilled. And next, oh uh, no, the direction said to mix the wet ingredients separately. So the milk and the egg were supposed to be mixed separately and then slowly incorporated into the rest of the crumble mix, I guess. Um, but it's me, so I'm just mixing it all in. Just stirring it up. They're all gonna get mixed up in there eventually, anyhow, I guess. All right, so you're never gonna guess what the directions tell me to do next. Next step is to fold in the cheese. What does that mean? What does fold in the cheese mean? He folds it in. I, I understand that, but how, how do you fold it? Do you fold it in half like a piece of paper and drop it in the pot, or what do you do? You just, here's what you do. Uh -huh. You just fold it in. Okay, I don't know how to fold broken cheese like that. And I don't know how to be any clearer. So after those clear instructions, I decided this is how you fold in cheese. Just uh, put it in and then fold over, fold, fold. And then I got tired of that business and just dumped it all in and decided now I'm stirring again. I'm just a stirring cooker. Not much of a folder, just a stirrer. And very importantly, don't forget to spray your pan. I forgot to spray my pan the other day making some cauliflower things and it was basically a huge waste because they all just stuck to the plate and I couldn't really tear them off that well without ruining them. So next the directions say to basically divide the dough up into four different pieces and those four different pieces shape into biscuits and put them on the pan. So this is me shaping things into biscuit shapes. We got one biscuit, we got two biscuits. Now we got uh, three biscuits. And of course the last biscuit is all of the leftovers in the bowl. Don't wanna waste any. So here are my four biscuits. Uh, biscuits. <laughs> So putting them in the oven for 10 minutes, which is completely wrong, which I find out after those 10 minutes are up. I open up the oven and uh, they don't look cooked at all. They pretty much look the exact same as when I put them in there. So yeah, still not biscuity enough. So I reread the directions and it's actually supposed to be in there for 20 minutes. So I put it in there for another 10. And these are the end results of the biscuits. Biscuits, I just keep saying that, I don't know. Here they are, pretty nice color. And now the taste test. The bottom's kind of burnt looking, but kind of all right. Get all that steam coming out. Just gonna taste a little. Ah, tastes like cornbread. Which is kind of weird, but I don't know what else I would expect with that texture of almond flour. It's kind of thick and coarse, like cornbread flour, I guess. You know, I'm just gonna put some more butter on there. 
Just melt it, put it on there. Yeah. Put the lid on the butter. Okay, so let's go in for this taste. So it tastes kind of like a cornbread biscuit. Not, it's not the best thing I've ever had, but also not the worst. So overall, I wasn't super impressed with these garlic bread biscuits, but I also wasn't super disappointed either. This was my first keto bread recipe, but I'm starting to think maybe the way that keto works is that it can satisfy your hunger, but you just don't want more. It's not that it's bad, but whereas you can sit and eat three cinnamon rolls, if you're expecting a cinnamon roll and someone gives you an unsweetened piece of cornbread, yeah, you'll still eat the cornbread, but when they ask if you want three more pieces, you'll be like, um, no, I'm good. So I'm really starting to see where the calorie cutting comes in with keto, just that you're hunger satisfied and you don't need to keep eating more like you would with normal bread. Me with normal bread. Me with keto bread. All right, I'm good. Thanks. So I wouldn't consider this first recipe either a fail or a success. Just kind of a, oh, okay. But maybe it is a success if the point of keto is to get you to stop binge eating all the bread. So I am still excited to get some more of these recipes learnt, learnt up, to learn some of these recipes. Just a little sneak peek of the future this Friday. I'm also going to be trying the pretzel recipe. Gonna try getting some keto pretzels in this tummy. Well, thanks for being here with me today, everyone. And experimenting with me with my new lifestyle. Kind of, hopefully, maybe, we'll see. If you're already subscribed, thank you, thank you so much. And if not, uh... Just a little sneak peek of the channel. I do some random things on Tuesday, sometimes cooking, sometimes crafting, sometimes talking about random stuff. And most Thursdays from now on, I try to do some type of sewing or crafting. And on Fridays when the stars align, I also like to do some product reviews. If any of this interests you, please feel free to press that subscription button down below. Well, I'll see you all Thursday for a new handcraft hand sewn day after hump day. And again on Friday with the pretzel keto trial recipe and it's going to be on friday because i'm going to be trying a new pretzel maker too it's a new product review i guess i don't really need to wink to that because it's not a secret well thanks for watching everyone and have a great rest of your day